Today, folks, we're diving into the tale of two energy stories today, with first and foremost, the Canadian conglomerate that is one of the five largest companies in Canada, now yielding damn near 8% dropping on its earnings. Of course, we're talking about Enbridge. We're going to review that and its dividend in contrast with Avila Energy, one of these small cap players in the realm that have been devastated, but looks to be an incredible value setup. As we just take a look, these are really cool stories, in my opinion. If that is a conversation you'd appreciate, as always, hit that like button, because we're going to start with the dividend lovers with Enbridge first. First and foremost, this company has been generally flatlining since it peaked back in 2015. It's trading down around 30%, but the yield for those income lovers is getting to insane levels. Just taking a look at the year to date here, we're down about another 5.2%. And I am just shocked at, at the yields that we're seeing across many of these Canadian large cap companies as it exists today, considering this is at the contrast of that terrible backdrop of the interest rates, you know, infrastructure cost and dilution that Enbridge has been experiencing, right? So we take a look, their, their adjusted EBITDA is up nicely at 16.4 billion versus 15.3 billion in 2022, but the earnings per share have dropped, right, from 281 to 279. This is the story the stock seems to be following most, even though on a year over year it is up one cent, but on the entirety of the year, it's not looking that great and they can't justify or actualize anything crazy because as mentioned, they increased the shares to pre-fund utilities acquisition. They wanna become one of the largest natural gas powerhouses, but that's going to come at the cost of earnings per share, right? So this is kind of the problem with the company from a growth standpoint. I think this company is starting to materialize um, at its maturity, uh, which is a big problem, right? Because you're not going to see the same growth you did. But for income, that's a different story here. So taking a look at some of their expenses, most of their expenses have been going up. I mean, that's just the market environment we're in. We'll talk about the dividend security here in a moment. And obviously, the dividend is secure. They're going to be growing it as many of the companies like we talked about with Bell in yesterday's video. But we can see that their interest costs are going up. You know, that's one of the prefixed problems they're discussing is the higher interest rate rates, the revised mainland toll. I mean, there's a lot of things just happening in the energy industry right now that is deficiting uh, this company. But what I want to talk about on the dividend side is for those looking for income, there's still stability here, right? I mean, that's the story of Enbridge, but it's not the same growth story and very similar to BCE. You know, the dividends into 2024 are really only expected to grow at 3%, which is exactly in line with Bell, which I just find super interesting, right? But this is a company that through the last decade in, in an era where the market was booming, interest rates were low, scalability was great, from 35 cents all the way to damn near 92 cents was just unbelievably jaw dropping for, you know, compound the dividend growth. But that's the difference between then and now, because back then you likely weren't getting the same yield that obviously you're getting today. So the thing is, is like you're getting a much higher starting dividend yield than you probably have at any time in the past, which, you know, largely gets represented here because we can see that outside of 2020 with a massive drop, you know, historically, I mean, Enbridge from 2010 didn't really start paying even a 4% dividend yield till about 2017. And you really didn't get into these higher yields until the last few years, realistically, right? So Dividend growth is likely to fall off pretty dramatically as this company matures, but the yield here at eight frigging percent, I mean, 3% growth from there, I don't think you're going to care as much. Like, you're just looking to collect cash flow today. That's where I would really look. But when we're talking about growth specifically, you know, this is why you kind of got to parity your portfolio depending on what you're after. If you're in retirement, if you're younger, you can kind of pair some of these stocks together because Avila Energy, I know in the realm of small caps, people don't want to look at them. A lot of devastation has happened through 2022, but this is what set up, you know, value plays. Um, and again, I'm not speaking of this is financial advice. I've broken this company down. I'll leave the link in the description below. But firstly, this is a vertically integrated natural gas player that's going to be cash flow positive in the next quarter or two. I mean, they're literally, <laughs> take a look at their balance sheet, 45 million in assets against, you know, 17.3 uh, million in liabilities. The company's got like $27, $28 million in underlying asset value against a market cap of $6.6 .6 million. I mean, they're better off liquidating their assets than they are being a publicly traded company today. Where is, I mean, you look at a company like Enbridge, right? And Enbridge, I mean, they've been doing pretty good with, uh, you know, their overall balance sheet here from 180 billion in assets to 115 billion in total liabilities. You know, they're obviously experiencing the interest rate rise, but they're doing a pretty good job at starting to lower some of their liabilities, you know, but again, they're trading well above their nav because I mean Enbridge is what a 90 yeah 97 almost 100 billion dollar company but their underlying asset value is probably closer to what is that like 65 75 somewhere in between the range of that that, that fluctuates but whereas Avila Energy man like you know these small cap companies have been basically written off as they're going bankrupt uh, which is not the case especially with a company like this right because they're cash flowing and they're they're removing a lot of their losses because I mean they're cash flowing almost two million dollars right so which is what three times I mean and this is the nine 
month end. This isn't even for the full year. This company isn't even trading at 3x the revenue. Now, keep in mind, if you're only cash flow centric, obviously the cash flow is going to matter. As you can see that their net losses have declined dramatically. I mean, totally. I mean, you just take a look at the expenses here. Financing net loss was 1.6 million for the three month end September versus 23 million in 2022, right? So this company is at this place, this pivot point right now where they've stated that they want to be cash flow positive and they are producing natural gas coming out of Alberta, pretty close to Edmonton here. Discuss the story a lot, but what makes it most intriguing is the vertical integration, right? Which they, they mentioned. They have the facilities to process you know, the natural gas, and they also have recently purchased a license, which is, again, one of these huge interesting things for me because my parents are doing this right now as they're upgrading, you know, the heating system for the house because the, the government is subsidizing it. They're going to pay 9000 up front, but they'll get 7000 back because of the government subsidies. And this thing is absolutely incredible, right? Because this this generator that they've got licensing agreements in the Western world for here is going to basically save about 25% on your natural gas bill and reduce emissions by 50%. So these are the things the government's are allowing people to get discounts on to install into the properties and I feel like a village just sitting in this really interesting you know piece today where it's gonna be interesting to see how it evolves incomparable to a company like Enbridge you know both of them have their own stories to play out here and I'm very intrigued to see what happens with both these energy companies this year but I will pass that conversation off to you are you more intrigued in the growth side of energy with companies that are in the production and building uh, you know building out and that's where you're gonna get the real growth from right it's probably more of a, of a speculative play a villa I think is getting close to being beyond a speculation this year they'll probably pivot from speculation to a growth story uh, whereas Enbridge is you know kind of matured and they're not gonna be growing really anymore to the extent that they might have in the past unless energy prices just absolutely balloon again but that comes back to inflation inflationary pressures and other problems on the economy but for income right for income an eight percent yield guys like you know it's pretty uh, astonishing considering it's still going to grow at a three percent guy guards expected but i'll pass that question off to you i'd love to know what you think in that comment section below